So, hello and welcome to Runkle of the Bailey. Uh, my name is Ian Runkle. I'm a Canadian criminal defense and fire employer. Today I'm joined by Jack Beeston to talk about Andrew Tate and his lawsuit, uh, specifically in the UK. So, um, I guess I'll give you a chance to sort of introduce yourself. Uh, can you let the viewers know sort of who you are and what you're about? Sure. Thank you very much for, um, for having me on. Um, so my name's Jack Beeston. I am an associate at um, the British law firm Q Jury and Partners. Um, we have for the past year or so uh, been working on a civil case um, in the UK on behalf of four alleged victims of Andrew Tate. Um, they allege various uh, physical and sexual assaults, uh, including three uh, allegations of uh, rape. Um, on top of that, obviously, when the Tates are involved, it's 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 quite a nebulous, um, uh, quite a nebulous kind of matrix of of accusations. Um, so there's the UK civil case. Um, the foundation of which was actually a um, complaint to the police and a subsequent British police investigation, um, which started in 2015 and concluded in 2019, by which point um, the Tates had already left the UK and travelled to Romania. Um, so on top of our accusations, or our clients' accusations, I should say, um, there is the Romanian um, investigation, um, which, uh, you know, which for which the Tates were indicted in 2022. Uh, that includes allegations of um, rape, forming an organized crime group and human trafficking. And um, then last week, there were uh, new developments which relate to an additional British police uh, investigation. Um, which it's been reported relates to uh, 21 further um, uh, accusations against both Andrew and Tristan Tate. Um, and those accusations, we understand from the reporting, um, include accusations of rape and human trafficking. So if you take it all together, you have from 2012 to 2022, a decade of allegations of um, sexual crimes and human trafficking and this one is you know of course uh nothing's been convicted or anything like that so we're you know sort of required to note allegations but uh the 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 total or the damage total on the lawsuit what's uh, what's being sought there um we can't uh can't say at the moment i mean it will be our, our damages in, in under British law are not, you know, comparable to uh, American damages. So, you know, it's not going to be, um, you know, if, if in America you often get figures of hundreds of millions of dollars, it's not going to be anything like that. It will be a, a relatively significant sum and one um, which is kind of commensurate with the British um, standards for, for damages for, um, personal injury, including the psychiatric harm that those injuries um, uh, led to or were a consequence of. So it sounds like the UK probably has a more similar system to Canada in that regard, or probably the other way around, given the uh, the historical origins. But uh, that so recently Tate was rearrested um, and now, I understand he's since been released, and I'm not really sure how that came to be, but can you talk a little bit? I understand your firm may have had something to do with his uh, his rearrest. Sure. Yeah, so um, we were made aware uh, two weeks ago now of a video um, produced by uh, an influencer or streamer called Aidan Ross, um, who has produced quite a lot of content with the Tates before. And this video um, online, uh, I think some texts were read out uh, by Ross from Tate, uh, where they were talking about producing some uh, content uh, together. 
And the basic gist of the messages was, uh, if we're gonna do this, we should do it soon, come to Romania, um, because uh, I'm gonna leave Romania soon and I'm not gonna come back ever again. In, in, in all likelihood, I won't come back ever again. So that's Tate allegedly saying that. Um, the obvious implication to draw from that is that uh, Tate was intending to flee. Um, he is under judicial control awaiting trial in Romania, which essentially means uh, that he has to, I think, check in with a policeman every few days. And, you know, um, basically the, there are, he's not allowed to leave Romania and there's certain conditions placed on his freedom of movement within the country. Um, so we made that video um, known to the authorities in the UK and the authorities in Romania as well. And then the arrest warrant was issued um, a few days later by the British authorities. Um, so the British ar arrest warrant and an extradition request has been granted, but suspended pending the outcome of the Romanian proceedings. And so he's now essentially been released under judicial control in respect of the Romanian proceedings and also the uh, British, British extradition request. So it's the same terms as I understand it, but applied to two different uh, uh, cases, as it were. Okay, so uh, he's released mostly because he's got Romanian proceedings, but the instant those are done, it sounds like they're going to uh, hopefully mail him back. That's that's my understanding, and I, I think it's also important to say that um, the conclusion of the Romanian proceedings um, would uh, also encompass any um, time spent in uh, detention in Romania. So um, theoretically, if, if they're found guilty, um, if Andrew and Tristan Tate are found guilty, they will serve prison time or serve their sentences in Romania and then be rearrested and extradited to the UK for um, further prosecution. So it might be uh, quite some time before I can, I'd hope the civil suit can proceed in the uh, the meantime, because otherwise that might That's be correct. yeah quite yeah. a long time. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, I think the the main headline really is is that last week was a very very bad one for the Tates. Um, you know, they have they always do uh, spin spin things, you know, to to make it seem um, that everything's going in there favor but you know a decision for an extradition is 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 not positive news for them and you know delaying it until the Romanian proceedings conclude is is also not you know that's not a positive development it just means that you're putting off a second criminal investigation until the first one concludes but, you know it's quite hard to spin that as a victory but it seems like they are trying to do that they, uh, I think that they're always going to spin things as a victory, but uh, it's it'll be interesting. I'm curious, was there any indication as to where they might flee, or has that uh, not been determined? No, I mean, um, you know, if where you flee depends, the map depends on who has an extradition treaty with Romania at that time and now who who has an extradition treaty with Romania or the UK um you know I don't I don't want to suggest places in case I give them ideas but they're probably <laughs> not obvious um so yeah I mean I I I, I don't want to speculate about where they were going to flee I mean they they've obviously spent spent time in in certain countries before um but uh I guess the the point now is that they would be fleeing from two criminal prosecutions rather than one and i imagine the uk and, and romania's kind of extradition treaty status is similar but not identical so there will be some countries which as a result of this second request are now no longer available to them as potential fleeing destinations um i should also say that you know they have they've denied that they are planning to flee at all obviously but um you know, I mean, based on that video that we were that we saw and were made aware of, that seemed clearly to be the implication. I was uh, was a little curious because uh, I'd heard 
sort of uh, through the grapevine. And then, of course, you guys were able to confirm that that video was the sort of key bit there. Um, I, I was curious as to whether you guys had been paying attention to it or whether somebody said, hey, you guys need to see this. So it sounds like it was, uh, and I'm not asking for sources, but it sounds like somebody tipped you guys off to say, check this out. Yeah, I mean, there is, there's a, there's a, um, there's a large, or perhaps not, perhaps large is the wrong word. There is, there's a, a kind of quite dedicated group of people who are concerned about um, the Tates and their influence on online. And, and as a result of their um, kind of diligence, we've, we've been, you know, many issues have been, have been flagged with us that, that we may not have seen otherwise. Um, you know, I think this is a very kind of online issue and things do come to our, um, do come to our attention either, um, you know, actively or, or passively things, things end up being flagged to us or we end up, you know, seeing things ourselves. Um, and, and this was another example of that. Um, there is, you know, obviously a lot of interest and a lot of attention on this, um, case and on on the tate's legal troubles generally so yeah it's it's that is a way of of, of information coming to us which we otherwise may have missed or, or wouldn't have been aware of and to start with it's something we're seeing a lot because uh as uh, me and sort of other people in this sort of online legal space cover cases we're finding that there's more and more uh you know, lawyers paying attention to coverage and that sort of thing where it, uh, the influence kind of sort of ends up going two ways in that uh, sense. So that's always interesting to see at the very least. Um, now, uh, with, with this being sort of so online and the Tates being, uh, kind of who they are, have, have you folks had safety concerns or, you know, what's, uh, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, this, uh, the, this firm, Kujurian Partners, um, you know, we have, we've done, uh, cases against, um, you know, involving known terrorists and involving, um, you know, uh, Yevgeny Prigozhin and, um, we do a lot of work, um, on behalf of, uh, victims of the war in Ukraine and those sorts of things. So. You know, um, in terms of of harassment, we have we do get quite a lot of that. Um, it's something that we were obviously prepared for, um, but you know, it's it comes with the territory of doing the kind of work um, that we do. Um, so you know, it's it's it, it is obviously um, disappointing when people you know r write to us with. Um, you know, trying to harass or threaten us. Um, but it's, you know, it's kind of part of the territory, unfortunately. And we would r much rather it happen to us than it happen to our clients. Um, so if we need to be the kind of lightning rod for that, then so be it. That's a uh, good way to think of it. And I guess, uh, so it sounds like it's more, um, you get more online, ha you know, hassle or sort of commentary about this one but they might not be on your top five of scary people <laughs> yeah i mean you know as as I, I i don't wish to kind of minimize the threat um that some of these people may may pose um but i'm just saying if you put them on a kind of sliding scale they're not quite the you know the wagner group or something like that um but i, I you know i do think there is actually a really important wider point there in that anyone who stands up to Tate, whether it's journalists, members of parliament, legal professionals, um, or, you know, alleged victims, they are, um, very, very regularly and with, you know, depressing, um, kind of routineness, um, harassed or abused online in particular but you know sometimes that does spill into the into the real world and so you know we've had conversations with journalists with members of parliament etc who've all been you know had the kind of sights turned on them 
and um you know even when we were in romania last year we we did a press conference with um individuals representing uh, american victims uh, or alleged victims i have to say um and you know in that press conference um tate's romanian lawyer and his pr um his pr uh, representative came to the press conference posing as journalists just for the purposes of you know harassing and disrupting it um and, wow you know, that's uh yeah i mean I, you know I, and again there you know it sounds sort of it sounds like a kind of slapstick thing and it and it was quite slapstick but but actually if you take a step back you have a legal professional you know, essentially doing his client's bidding to the extent where he's sat in the front row of a press conference pretending to be a journalist, um, uninvited. Um, and it wasn't until other journalists, you know, called him out and said he's Tate's lawyer that, that um, you know, it came to light. And that is, you know, <laughs> I, I, I dare say that in, in the UK, if a lawyer did that, they'd probably be struck off. Um, yeah, I was going we to say have, here, if you, yeah, you know, gained attendance under false pretenses, that would be a big deal. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's not, it, it's, it's, it's just kind of symptomatic of the fact that, you know, everyone gets kind of dragged into this whole sort of online attitude towards your opposition or your opponents. And, um, you know, actually in the real world where um, there are very serious allegations being made, um, what you actually need is a bit of kind of objective professionalism. And unfortunately that wasn't on display when we were in Romania last year. Um, yeah, and it's just, I think, a symptom of the kind of uh, onlineification of these cases. It's, uh, it's certainly probably not gonna get uh, better before her, you know, in the short term, it's likely to continue to sort of amp up. Um, I've actually been expecting that when this goes live, there'll be uh, probably some of that in my email box, but I'm also kind of used to death threats myself. So, mm -hmm. um, and I guess in the UK, you guys can't do much to protect yourselves. You're not uh, sort of, it's not a firearm uh, sort of friendly jurisdiction or anything like that. It's uh yeah, I mean that's probably for the best, actually, because I, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm glad that I don't have to kind of make that <laughs> make that call. Cool. Um, but no, I I think you know you it's interesting what you said about it's to be expected, and it, I think it is to be expected now. But the question is whether it should be expected, and um, unfortunately, things are, you know, things seem to be getting worse rather than better, and. Um, and you know that's obviously unfortunate um and i guess the question is what we can you know do to to address that problem because i think you know any high profile case is always going to seemingly attract this sort of behavior now and it's 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 a difficult thing to navigate it's it's going to be more and more of an issue, I think, uh, for every legal system as we go forward, is just how to deal with some of these uh, high-profile cases, and especially ones, um, you know, that are as, uh, or that stir up emotions in the way that this one does. Tate supporters are certainly um, uh, strident, I guess is a, a word for it. And, uh, but the allegations in this are are also pretty, you know, shocking when you look at the things that uh, that Tate has sort of been uh, alleged to get up to. Mm. Uh, I don't, I don't know the specifics as much. With uh, it's four accusers you mentioned, correct? Yeah. Um, is it uh, sort of in line with the sort of um, his lover boy sort of uh, approach to uh, human trafficking? Is that sort of the basics? These? um it the accusations of our clients um are are less less of a kind of human trafficking uh nature they more relate to just um 
to sexual and physical assaults, essentially, including three, um, three uh, of our clients who, who allege rape or multiple rapes. Um, and, you know, the, the evidence um, corroborate each, each, co each um, allegation sort of corroborate each other, despite the fact that they were made, you know, individually and at separate times. Um, there does seem to be a sort of um, modus operandi and um, yeah, it just, you know, it, it, it makes it all the more frustrating that the authorities in the UK, um, you know, didn't properly prosecute um, because our clients, three of our clients came forward with these allegations, um, you know, nearly 10 years ago now. Um, and uh, the prosecution went on for four years, during which time um, Tate left Britain and travelled to Romania and, you know, is, stands accused of further crimes there. So, you know, the obvious implication is, um, you know, if, if the proper job had been done the first time around, um, then that could have been avoided, which is an upsetting um, kind of realization to come to. And something sort of often heard in uh, these sorts of sexual assault and, you know, related cases is just if something had been done, it mm. might have prevented, uh, you know, further issues. With Mr. Tate being in Romania and most of his assets in Romania, uh, are you going, like, assuming you prevail in this lawsuit, is there going to be any difficulty with uh, with recovering this or what's the issues there? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, we, we we often deal with cases with defendants who have assets all over the uh, globe. It would be, you know, helpful for us if he just had everything, um, you know, registered directly in his name in a UK, um, you know, in UK property. That would be great. Uh, but that's often not how these people work. Um, you know, helpfully, lots of countries have uh, very well established um, procedures for the legalizing and enforcement of British judgments. Um, and so we will, uh, once a judgment has been obtained, if a judgment is obtained, go around the world and um, seek to enforce it in any jurisdiction um, we can. So um yeah I, you know again with these with these sorts of cases and with with you know uh, wealthy individuals it's very rare that all of their assets are in one place and so you you often have to you know kind of travel around um seeking to enforce but that's just what we'll do and so you might be in the position of seizing cars and uh <laughs> all sorts of other uh um, yeah I mean, i'm not sure what what there is left to seize uh, in terms of the Romanian assets, I think the uh, prosecutors there quite rightly, um, you know, seize what they're what they are able to seize and what's legal for them to seize, and um, and you know, if found guilty, I imagine those um, assets will be liquidated for the benefit of the um, victims in Romania, and you know, that would be a positive development. Well, if you guys do end up seizing anything with sort of a chair or a seat, uh, Aiden Ross might be interested in buying those because uh, <laughs> she's shown a past interest in Mr. Tate's. Uh, <laughs> so. Yeah, this is, it's wild to me. Just, uh, you know, I guess, do you have any thoughts on sort of how he maintains such a, like a weird, you know, sort of, support with people um with these sorts of allegations over his head is that uh some sort of so, something strange to you or yeah i mean i think it I, th I think it is slightly strange um but at the same time you know as we've seen with these types of figures when you allege conspiracy at every turn everything negative that happens thereafter is evidence of the conspiracy rather than being you know, evidence against you. Um, and it's, you know, it is a common playbook um, that seems to be deployed by lots of people, lots of internet personalities or 
particularly personalities associated with the with the kind of populist right, I guess. Um, I'm not sure Tate kind of clearly fits into any of any kind of political categories, but the the techniques seem to be the same. So, you know, you say I will be arrested, aware that you may or may not have committed crimes that might require investigation and then you get arrested and you go see this is just evidence and then you get arrested you know you get arrested again and you just say this is more of the matrix attacking me and so on and so forth um you know all, all i can say is that is is that you know this isn't a conspiracy there are very um serious allegations from multiple um places and in multiple countries and you know after um in terms of interpersonal offenses rape is among the very most serious crimes that anyone can commit and they will always be investigated um and prosecuted uh if sufficient evidence exists to do so and you know i don't I, that can't be any great mystery to anyone that's you know as i say there are it's up there with um you know murder and terrorism and all the other very serious offenses it's uh and certainly that is something that we should always sort of vigorously uh vigorously pursue it it is interesting sort of it's anything where he suffers a loss uh is proof of his conspiracy and proof of his worldview and anything where he can spin it to a gain is like proof that he is you know whatever it is that he's claiming to be um so it's i guess it's kind of um kind of a fascinating little uh you know sort of thing but it, it's how do you how do you think sort of publicity sort of plays into this uh like does the uk broadcast trials at all or is it all uh is it all sort of uh, attendance in person only Ge yeah ge generally not i mean you know often inquiries and those sorts of things are, are publicly broadcast and live streamed um generally here it's um it's about in-person attendance um i think um in terms of publicity um you know you're, you're kind of caught um, because if you don't do anything, if you don't publicize your, the developments in the case, or you don't counter disinformation or misinformation, um, then you let the vacuum be filled by, by, by Tate, um, and by the information that he puts out there. Um, you know, he has eight plus million followers on, on X, um, whatever he says is going to be seen by far more people than whatever we say. Um, so we do have to, we do have to take steps to, 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 to allow our clients stories to be, um, to be heard and to be, you know, um, expressed. Um, but at the same time, you know, I think we would rather just kind of quietly go about our work on this. Um, but we, can't really do that and the same it's the same with you know our clients crowdfunding their case um and so you need to make people aware of that fact because um that you know they're not they're not rich um these are expensive you know proceedings are expensive the court system is expensive to navigate and you know they need to they need to be their case needs to be heard it's important that it's heard it's important that they um you know, try and get the closure um, that they're entitled to through through the civil case and hopefully through the reopening of the um, criminal case as well. And that's sort of a good intro there. When this is live, there will be in the link below a uh, or in the description below uh, a link to the GoFundMe. So check that out because uh, legal work is unfortunately not cheap it's uh you know everything does cost and so um to help that you know check that out see if you guys can lend some support because uh it's this stuff matters um are you 
are you surprised really by the degree of support when because when I look at the allegations, this seems very much, um, you know, assuming the allegations are true, they're very much in the vein of sort of petty, um, petty kind of low level organized crime thuggery kind of thing, like low level, um, you know, the sort of uh, pimps and so forth who get thrown in jail for lengthy periods fairly regularly, but are not um, not normally considered like paragons of society. They're normally sort of uh, reviled. And is it surprising to you to see sort of how much support he's got and, and where it comes from? Yeah, it, it is. It is surprising. I mean, a, a lot of the support is generated at a, you know, it's generated among particularly young men and boys. I mean, I don't know what the situation is like in, in Canada, in the UK. He's a very popular figure um, among school children, school boys in particular, and his popularity has kind of um, led to a number of sort of copycat influencers. Um, and I think it's, you know, it's an effective way to tap into um, you know, perhaps a, a, a shifting understanding of, of of what masculinity is and what it should represent and, you know, people feeling slightly threatened by that. Um, I think what is slightly disappointing is the lack of voices um, in the other direction, you know, the lack of positive male role models coming forward and directly challenging Tate's message. Um, you know, perhaps a fear of getting dragged into the into the kind of you know the uh, sort of roller coaster of abuse and harassment and all those things but i think you know this is it is really important that men say no this isn't you know this this isn't right this isn't the 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 view of femininity and women and um you know same sex couples and those sorts of things which which take uh, projects is 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 not the right view and actually lots of people fought very hard um for the world that we are all um you know lucky enough to live in today um and you know the that this is a kind of retro fantasy of of a world which has never existed you know um and and i think those voices need to be um those voices need to be given more prominence, but unfortunately it is easy. It's, it's easier to just, you know, to spread messages of intolerance and, and hatred rather than, um, you know, positivity and, and those sorts of things. And I, I think that that struggle has played out quite clearly in politics. Um, and we're now seeing it on the kind of cultural, social um, scale um, with, with Tate it's probably also a little harder to to sort of create that messaging and make it interesting because a lot of those voices are things like you know hey this is a person who works hard to provide for his kids and his family you know hey this is somebody who you know um you know the guy who's volunteering his time at the homeless shelter uh mm. probably isn't as you know it's not as uh you know, people are less likely to watch a TikTok video about that than the guy who says, hey, here I am driving these, you know, or driving this fancy car that was paid for by, you know. Yeah. Mean, you know, it's like, this is, it makes it difficult because um, I guess the allure of organized crime, although I will note most of the people who engage in this sort of, in sort of the alleged behavior uh, live fairly marginal lives. Tate's a bit mm. of a an outlier on that regard. So it's um it's it's sort of a, an odd circumstance. I'm just fascinated by the fact that um, his supporters seem to be both the like anti like a lot of them are anti pornography, but pro pornographer, and you know because that's really what Tate that's sort of his how he's making his money is this uh you know 
non-consensual pornography ring is the allegations in Romania and other places. So I'm very, um, very perplexed by that, I guess is a uh, way to put it. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that there's been some kind of inconsistency in terms of um, Tate's, you know, public messaging. Before his arrest, he was much more aggressively misogynistic, you know, has, has been online talking about choking and, you know, um, his language was a lot more kind of guttural and aggressive and he was you know kind of um his his messaging was a lot clearer i think now it's sort of this weird post arrest it, it's become this weird kind of on the one half very very conspiratorial the matrix is attacking me um i'd rather live you know die free than live chained and it, it's become much more kind of um self-consciously conspiratorial and um and and then the other side of it is is he's now kind of promoting himself as a sort of pos more overtly positive influence and you know there's stuff about self-discipline and fitness and those sorts of things which are in and of themselves you know you can go to the gym and work hard and um drive a bugatti and no one is going to criticize you for those things <laughs> um sort of suggests that, that that's somehow problematic it's it's the allegations of human trafficking and sexual assault that are the problem um and that really has nothing to do with what you say online or don't they are standalone offenses which um you know relate to each individual um alleged victim um and i just think it's important to say that um you know, this isn't about what he says, it's about what he's alleged to have done. And just, I guess, if I can be uh, slightly uh, personal, how did you get into sort of deciding to work at a firm that takes on these kinds of, uh, you know, you've mentioned uh, Wagner Group and so forth. How does somebody get into doing that? Like, um, Yeah, I mean, there aren't, there aren't a huge number of, of places that um that do the kind of work that we do so you know i count myself very lucky um to have had the opportunity to um to do it i mean i think if anyone's interested in this kind of work um the fact that not many places do these sorts of cases means that you know you don't have to look that hard uh, to find you know to get yourself a list and then you just have to kind of um hang around and be annoying and send emails and you know send your cv in and those sorts of things and you know hopefully um, hopefully like me you, you get lucky um but yeah no i think it's um it's uh it certainly makes for um an interesting uh life if not slightly <laughs> stressful sometimes obviously um but no it's um you know it's 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 a real privilege to be able to act for the clients that we do and to be able to work on the cases that we do. And, um, you know, this Tate case is, is just an, a, another example of that. I feel very, um, honored to, to work for our clients and, um, and, you know, hopefully in the coming months, years, um, we will deliver them the kind of justice and, and, more importantly, I think for them, closure that that they haven't been able to have access to for you know, a decade now. And that's uh, being able to sort of be in that field is something rare because there's a lot of lawyers out there who's uh, who are just fighting over like property line disputes and these sorts of things. So um, I guess the other end of things is everybody out there. Uh, like what's the line everybody out there hates a lawyer until they need one but uh <laughs> there are lawyers out there who are out there doing uh doing good there's lawyers on every side of an issue so it's good to remember that um and just for my own curiosity uk still maintains the barrister solicitor distinction yes yeah um so which I end of that are you <laughs> so i'm uh, i'm a solicitor but we uh, as a firm sort of 90% of our work, I would say, is um, is litigious. So I spend a lot of time 
uh, talking to and working with some some very wonderful barristers. Um, and yeah, you know, I, I'm generally grateful for the for the distinction. Um, as you know, I think quite a lot of barristers would be um, quite stressed if they had to do the work solicitors did, and very much vice versa as well. So um, I think the distinction, while curious, perhaps um, is is quite a good one. <laughs> It's uh, it's very strange to me because here it's, uh, you know, just by virtue of being a lawyer, you're both a barrister and solicitor. Mm. And so everything is all is all mixed. We don't have that distinction. It's very. Uh, uh, I guess the other the other side of things looks unusual, although yeah. uh, people keep telling me that I am well outfitted if, uh, <laughs> if we ever adopt the wigs here. So, yeah, <laughs> that's uh all right. Well, thank you so much. Uh, anything else you want to let people know other than, again, uh, folks, check out the GoFundMe below. Uh, they they could use your assistance. And this is really about uh, four women who are trying to uh, trying to get some measure of justice in a world that doesn't always make that easy. So. Yeah, no, I think that's uh, that's a very eloquent very eloquently put so i don't think i have anything to add to that except to say thank you thank you so much for joining me folks uh jack beeston and uh as mentioned he is one of the people leading the fight here you know trying to uh trying to push a lawsuit through in the uk uh against mr tate and uh and his brother so andrew tate and i, I forget his brother's name which tristan. probably drives his brother nuts <laughs> tristan tate <laughs> So thank you once again, and uh, 